Okay, and the next little video here I got going on is this is I got a lot of different firearms here that I do a lot of stuff with, but this one right here is probably one of my favorite ones to shoot. It's also the dirtiest, nastiest firearm I own. Very complicated to use. Very complicated to get a load tuned up. Very complicated to hold. Very, very dirty machine. And uh, it's one of the smallest firearms I have. Um, I'm going to break this down to a lot of little pieces here. This is um, my 45 caliber black powder pistol. And uh, you guys may have seen the video that I have. This is a, it's, a, it's actually a Kentucky uh, pistol. This, this particular one here is a model 5014. Um, it's a Jagger. Beautiful pistol. Uh, really a bitch to clean. So we're going to kind of go into that a little bit. First thing I want to say here is if you guys, any of you are serious about working on your stuff, you need to really make an investment and get one of these right here. Because if you don't have a good screwdriver kit, you're going to mess stuff up. You're going to you're going to strip screws out. You're going to be improvising left and right, trying to get the right tool for the right job. You know this particular case here is made by Wheeler Engineering. Um, this is a full screwdriver set that has pretty much everything in it. I'm missing a few of the AR tools back here. I don't own an AR, so uh, no need to really have them. Uh, all the tips are magnetic, so you can hold the tips in there and such. But anyway. What I wanted to do is just kind of go into getting this thing apart here and kind of explain how delicate things are when you start getting into this particular firearm. First of all is, you know, you got to select the right tools here to get this thing apart. Um, it takes a couple of tries to make sure that you got the right screwdriver bits. I like to take the, the actual bit and find the screw that you're going to remove. In this case, it's going to be this one on top that holds the barrel onto the stock. The screw, if it fits in there, it fits in there. That's kind of what you're you're after. You just, you know, do it, get it out of there. That way, you're not uh, stripping this thing out. When I put this back together, a lot of it has to do with torque and pressures. If you get this thing over torqued or too tight here, too tight here, the, the trigger mechanism won't work because you're actually squeezing against the wood, you know, um, sideways on this thing and it messes with some of the intricate parts of this. We'll take the nipple off here. This particular one's a musket, uh, for musket nipple, or cap. Here's my rod out here, I gotta kinda just fire her a little bit and get a different screwdriver for underneath. Um, it comes apart pretty fast. It's just the cleaning part of it is just such a long, drawn-out process. And uh, if I'm going to shoot this, I need to make sure that I have enough time after I shoot it to clean it. Because I don't want to let it sit. Because if I let it sit, it will definitely get corrosion in it to the point where you may have to actually re-blue the thing. So I've got those loose. The barrel comes right out of it pretty simply. Um, you want to make sure you got to hold a hammer so you don't drop that hammer on top of stuff there and mess this up because once the nipples off of it this will go past the fast the, the final lock and then you end up having to take this all apart and get that all put back together again a really soft steel in there too so you have to kind of be careful with that the barrels loose um, pretty simple as far as that goes what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a brush down here a few times just to kind of get things loosened up um, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out of this thing. We'll show you how much crap comes out of this. Shot this a couple of days ago. And it's past time to get it cleaned up. So definitely on top of getting this thing squared away. Just to just to give you an idea, how much crap comes out of that barrel. I mean, that's it. Doesn't seem like a lot, but there's. I mean, I could put that on a scale and weigh it. There's enough there. So now I've got a 22 caliber brush here. Um, I'm actually going to trim this thing down a little bit. It's got a little flange on the end of it. We'll get that cleaned up so you don't have to worry about that. 
you got a nice square end on it. I like to run this down into the cap hole here and uh, work on the threads in there and make sure that that gets nice and cleaned. Um, don't ever want that to go bad if you strip that out or something. You could have all kinds of problems for sure. And then we'll kind of go to the next step. It's going to be in the house. Okay, so the next part of this is in the house here. Um, I know people are going to complain about this too and say, I shouldn't do that. But this is the way it happens. Our water in this house is very warm. I can get it at probably oh, somewhere around 115 to 120 degrees. So when I'm done with this, this water evaporates really fast from the place that I'm using it. So got the kitchen sink here. Um, went ahead and di dirtied up all these dishes so you guys didn't feel like that uh, you live like slobs or anything, just so kind of I'd fit in. I put the some bore cleaner in here. We're just going to run this down here a few times, just kind of scrub this thing and get some of the materials broke up in this bad boy, because there's going to be a lot of it in here. I like to turn it down there in the bottom where the powder sits in the bottom of this barrel. There's typically a lot of junk in there. <clears throat> okay, so I'm cleaning the brush here. I don't know if you guys can see how much junk's coming out of that. If I could turn this camera just a little bit. I'll get it as low as I can. There we go. I'm going to run this water right through here. You see how kind of nasty this is. There's a lot of junk coming out of there. Don't be afraid to just run the water right down a barrel on something like this. If you're going to take it apart and completely clean it, then do that. Take it completely apart and clean it. Get the parts warmed up with the hot water. That way they'll dry off real quick. Strip all the oil and all the residue out of this thing. And I'm pumping stuff right out the bottom with a musket cap nipple goes there. Just like a pump. We're just blowing it right out of there. And there's plenty of stuff coming out of it for sure. <clears throat> like to take just plain old dish soap. Just plain dish soap. And it'll bubble up a little bit. That works really good on the black powder stuff or the Pyrodex. Thing. See the nasty dark junk coming out of there. I'm sure some of that's rust, but <clears throat> run some black water both ways here and finish this up. I'm gonna take a Q-tip to clean all these holes out with all these threads. Make sure all that stuff's squared away. Sure. And up here on the breach, it's usually really nasty and stuff. I just scrub up all this area, clean all that junk off. It's nice and stripped out. So I'm going to put a light coat of oil on this particular one on the outside. Real susceptible to rusting. I've got a cure for that. I just haven't done it this gun yet. I'll kind of show you that maybe a little later on here. Or maybe what we'll do is we'll do a spot on this gun and then show you how that all works. Now I'm going to take a patch just like you clean it in the field. Wrap the patch the fuzzy side out on this thing. I'm going to run this down inside of here. Not bad. Not bad at all. Take a lot of the gunk here. And be careful, you piss your wife off really bad. You run one of these patches down a garbage disposal, plug, plug it up. And then you got some fat guy laying underneath the sink here with his crack hanging out with a $120 bill coming to you from Joe Bob the plumber. I don't have to go there either. So there's that. That's nice and clean. Let's wipe it off with a paper towel or dish towel or but I see people use hair dryers too. The hair dryer works really good. Gets things nice and warm and 
take it out to the shop if you've got an air compressor and blow it all out really good. For me, downside these little holes, it seems like the most susceptible place to rust and you don't really pay attention to those little spots. But right here at the end of this particular barrel, there's two little bitty buggers that always catch hell. You don't ever want to Loctite the screws on a smoke pole like this because you're going to be taking it apart for sure. So there's that. That's pretty clean. I don't know if you can see all the junk came off of it. I got a little bit down in the cracks right there. A little toothbrush will probably clean that up really good. But I'm going to be shooting this again in the next couple of days, so we're not going to worry about that too much. We'll go out and put it together. So now we're going to put this together. i got one more piece here to clean. It's a little nipple for the muzzle loader cap. What I like to do is just very, very cautiously choke that up into the drill there. And then, well, let's see if I can find the right stuff here. I've got some, like, uh, steel wool or emery cloth here. What I do is just turn this thing and run this. And it'll polish that end up really super nice. You see how nice and shiny that got there, right? That makes a nice surface to hold the cap on there. Um, another thing I'll, I'll tell you too is perfectly smooth isn't necessarily good on that. What I'll do is take 80 grit sandpaper and <clears throat> Actually, this is a little bit coarser than 80 grit, but <clears throat> this is 320, actually smoother. This is 320 right here. And I'll put that on there and just give it a quick spin. Nothing crazy, just a quick grab. I'll tell you why I do that. When your cap goes over the end of this now, your cap slips over it, it's not smooth anymore. It's got like little knurls and little grooves in there that cap will hold on there better, it won't come off. If it's perfectly smooth, that cap will pop off there real easy. So I don't like to do that. So get that out of the way. There's usually a little bit of crap on these things. Make sure the hole's clean. There's gonna be some junk on it, there's no question. It happens to every, every, every one I've ever taken apart. They get pretty grungy pretty quick. So anyway, that part of that's cleaned up. Take a minute or so. This is where the fire happens. If this doesn't work right, everything else you do is a waste of time. Because if your hammer doesn't seat on this just right, or you got some crap in here, this is where your ignition system is, this is where your biggest failure is going to happen. You know, I just want to show you something here real quick. Just from the time it took me to get from the house back out here to the shop, there's just a little bit of water in this barrel, just very, very little. I want to show you how, how fast things get ugly out here. See the rust on that already? I don't know if you can see that. It's already started to rust inside that barrel. I mean, it doesn't take long, especially when you got a little bit of the, the powder impurities and sulfur or such in there. <clears throat> especially with regular black powder, it's really, really corrosive. The Pyrodex and stuff like that isn't so bad, but anyway. Swabbing this thing out a little bit more to get all the moisture out of it. The other thing I've done too is just run alcohol down there and then blow it out with the air compressor when I'm done. That works pretty good. I just don't want to fire the air compressor up right now and deal with that, so I'm just going to do it kind of old school here. Most people have this stuff going on. And those patches aren't, ex they're pretty expensive. <sighs> it's getting there really quick. Well, here we are. Get this thing dried out. Yeah, so we're good now. <clears throat> uh, six patches and some rust. So that's all good to go. Let me blow this out with some compressed. Make sure you get these little bitty holes here. Get the screws going, get all the junk out of that. Now, okay, this is where the tetra oil comes into play here. This is one of those places where I use the tetra oil. On the threads of this, I will put just a 
little bitty dab. I mean, like, when I mean little dab, I mean little dab of, of stuff right on the threads of this. Uh, you don't want to put it on the tip of it to get inside the actual chamber itself. It's got to kind of, fire's got to go around a corner there. You don't want to get that too gobbly gooked up with stuff because it will, that oil will really retain a lot of junk. And I'm sure there's a special tool for this, but I'm just going to give it a snug here with this for right now. Like that takes care of All right, so now all I got to do is basically put this thing back together. I'm going to use a very light coat of oil on the outside of this thing. Um, what I need to do one day is just go ahead and polish this thing up and clean it up. Okay, so we're down to the last screw here, basically. And, uh, you know, th this is one of those things that not every gun's the same. I, I know this gun very well. I've had this thing apart oodles of times, scores of times. Um, there's a few things here that, you know, I, got, I suppose I probably should get my fat wrench out and put some numbers on this, but I know if I put numbers on this thing that it won't work right every time, because it's wood. If the humidity is at 80%, it's going to be different than if it's at 20%. So, what I kind of wanted to show you here is that all these parts inside here are this side of the gun's mounted to this side of the gun with these screws. These screws go all the way through this um, this other side here. First of all, if you tighten up this screw here too much, it sticks out on this side too far and it actually gets in the way of the hammer. You can see it down there underneath the hammer there. So it will actually hold the hammer from functioning or actually add friction to it. If you tighten the front screw too much, then it throws the sear off underneath. So everything has to, you got to kind of tweak it just right, and then even throughout the year, if I do something to this now, it's September 26th, right? 27th. By December, I'll have to adjust these again to get this to do its thing. You know, this is as a safety feature on it. It also has a cock feature on it. This particular gun, I mean, it's, it's like maybe three quarters of a pound trigger pull. Um, and I know some of you are going to say, what the hell are you smoking? Well, I'll tell you what, on a pistol like this, you need to have it like that. Because if you're fussing around with a whole bunch of trigger pull, it's really going to affect the accuracy on this thing. This isn't something I would hand a, a, an inexperienced person to shoot and expect it to function right. Um, you pull that back and just bump it a little bit and it could go off. So the whole time I'm getting ready to shoot, i got my thumb here or I've got my thumb in this area here so if it drops it's just gonna lock on my thumb like that it's not gonna hurt me I mean there's a little bit of pressure nothing like a crawdad or crayfish or crab or lobster does but I mean there's a little pressure there but uh, I want to hang on to that until I get it pointed in the right direction where I want to be and once I get on the target I'll let go of that and then find the trigger softly and I mean what I mean little I wish I had a scale I could see what this is but I mean it's probably maybe three quarters of a pound. Uh, but I love this gun. It's a blast to shoot. Uh, no pun intended, but 45 caliber bullet coming out of here at, you know, you can put 50 grains of powder in this and a 45 caliber or 45 caliber bullet, 200 grain bullet will come out of here, rip snorting at, you know, 15, 1600 feet per second. And I mean, that's, that's pretty good smoke for a little, Pistola. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to put this thing away and there's a video out there showing me shooting this thing. Um, it's, a, it's a good little gun out to 50 yards for the most part. I mean, it's not like my other handguns I have where you can shoot two, three, four hundred, five hundred 500 yards with, but uh, it's just it's just fun to shoot. It's really a kick in the shorts. Um, I've got some little cups that I've made for this that uh, shoot some shot and stuff and I was wanting to take a grouse or some kind of waterfowl or something with it someday just for giggles just to say I did it uh, so we're gonna see how that see how it goes anyway thanks for watching and uh, you can subscribe and just kind of follow along if you want so 
the dry bronco right there. We'll talk to you about why that's a dry bronco someday too.